I did like that 90 minutes into the show, Tony warned us to set our DVRs for an overrun. <laughs> yeah. Even Taz started laughing at him. Yeah. <laughs> a little late, but... Yeah, yeah. So they're just unloading on each other and... Do you know what a DVR is? A digital video recorder. You're somewhere else. That's why you set the DVR. I, you can't set it remotely I, now. Well, I guess that's true. But it's more to the point... Except not on Apple, not on YouTube TV still. Maybe not. But uh, more to the point, I don't know if you can set it like... If you're watching the show, you don't need to set your DVR. And if you're not watching the show, you don't know to set your DVR. So it's useless. I do have two things to say about this. If you have YouTube TV, okay... If you start at some point when the show is still airing, okay, it ends at 10. If you start at 9.59, and the options are join in progress or start at the beginning, okay? Mm -hmm. If you choose start at the beginning, you're not going to get the overrun. Mm. If you choose join in progress, you can rewind and start watching from the beginning, and it will get the overrun, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I've been doing lately... Because you still can't program YouTube TV to go five extra minutes or whatever. What I do now is if I if I start after the show ends, as soon as I load it up, I immediately report an incorrect end time. Aha. And then I pray that within the next two hours, one of these idiots at YouTube TV will find it and fix it. And about 50% of the time it happens. The other 50%, I have to go on YouTube and watch the AEW uh, YouTube channel to see the end of the show. That's what I had to do tonight. But that's my five-minute tip. Cool. So uh, Keith strikes the diamond dust, fights with the tiger driver, can't get it, and Roddy hits his jumping knee, and the end of heartache, it wins. I love Roderick Strong matches. Yeah, he's great. Awesome. So then Cole gets back in the ring, which, as you mentioned, is no small feat. He calls Roddy the greatest pound-for-pound -pound wrestler alive today. Okay, let's, let's dial that back a little bit. That's, that's a strong claim. Uh, he also says the kingdom are one of the greatest tag teams that ever lived. <laughs> He's on a roll. Uh, you know, they're one of the tag teams that ever lived. Then he says Warlow is one of the most dominant men in AEW history. Okay, I'll grant that. He's lost like one match. That's fair. When the time is right, he says, we are going to win the AEW championship. Say hello to your new kingdom and get comfortable. We're going to be here for a very, very long time. It was essentially exactly what he said last week. Yep. But he's a hell of a heel. He's a great promo. Renee interviews Deanna Parazzo. Deanna says, if Tony wants to pretend she doesn't know who I am, I can send a screener. She can watch my debut on Collision this week. And then someone stepped in. I thought, who are you? It's Red Velvet. And she says, I'm making my debut, my Collision debut, this week as well. You didn't remember Red Velvet? I didn't recognize her. What? As soon as she said, I'm going to stir it up. I said, oh, That's how you remembered? Yeah. I didn't remember stir it up at all. Huh. That was my other idea on uh, Observer Live today. She should do the new Jack gimmick and brawl while they play Stir It Up over and over again. You really like that new Jack gimmick. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Dude, the, the best new Jack gimmick was New Jack. <laughs> this is the problem. Once yes. you've seen it. I remember when the network first came out, the WWE Network debuted, and someone said, uh, at first, when it first came out, they had just edited New Jack off the network entirely. Mm. Uh, this is ECW matches, which I guess is all of them. And uh, people who were not around in the late 90s didn't understand why. And they had to explain because they played licensed music start to finish from the moment he came out to the bell rang to end the match. Yes. And someone said, the whole time? Didn't that get annoying? And the obvious response is, have you ever seen New Jack yeah. wrestle? Not, he needed music. Did not get annoying either. It, it didn't awesome. get annoying, no. The man needed music. Sting and Darby Allen versus Powerhouse Hobbs and Kanosuke Takeshita in a tornado tag match, which usually means all four men in the ring. This mostly meant no men in the ring. They were fighting outside almost the entire time. And they had a crazy ass stunt show. God. Darby doing the coffin drop to Takeshita on the floor, but Takeshita catches him. A chaos theory Roman rolling German suplex. See, the thing was, it wasn't even that. It was how he landed. Right. Like, he landed only on his head. Yes. On the floor. And you see him grab his head, not like selling, but like, holy fuck, that hurt. And then he gets thrown in the ring, and Takesh and Hobbs do the jump rope spot where they grab an arm and a leg. <laughs> sure, yeah. And they, you know... They should actually do that in one of the other heels should like jump rope while they're doing that and then they toss him. But anyway, it's not that funny because they toss him 
And uh, and he goes flying, and he just like spins through the air. I believe two full revolutions. Yep. Yeah. And as he's spinning, I thought, you know, this guy has fallen many times at the skate park, and he has legit been training to climb the deadliest mountain on earth. And he's done some crazy shit. And I'd bet you anything he's having the time of his life spinning through the fucking air right now. But then he landed mm. with his head and neck on the bottom rope. And uh, and not to make light, because I don't think we'll ever really know what exactly happened to Paraguayo Jr. But, uh, you know, Ray gave him that drop toe hold into the middle rope and he died. And uh, he hit the rope. That was it. So, uh, you know, these ropes are no joke, everybody. I mean, they they hurt to hit. Like, uh, you know, when you first start training, you hit those ropes, and you have these gigantic marks on your arms and your armpits. He fucking flew, and it's like any accident. It's one thing when you know it's coming. He didn't fucking know there was going to be a rope that he was going to hit. No. It was so bad, and he was hurting after that one. So that was two. And then he did the coffin drop off the stage, or whatever that is, like the cheap seats. And oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, Takesha mostly He's caught him. Way up in the air. But he fucking crashed on the Takesha ground. Takesha broke his fall. Yeah. And then let him, fall, and let him hit the ground. <laughs> I'm like, chimney Christmas. Yeah, I, I've decided about, by the end of this, I was ready for Revolution to also be Darby Allen's last match. Well, what I'm hoping <laughs> is that this is both of their last matches until Revolution. Yeah. Like, yeah. Take a break. We know what the match is going to be. So, like, let's not do any more until then. Sting, this crazy fucker, mm -hmm. he's 64. Yeah. And and granted, you know, Flair, he had a rough life. But uh, Flair is only 10 years older. And uh, and he looked 40 years older in there. Yeah. Because he's trying to do chops and he can barely stand up. And Sting, meanwhile, in the background, is like fucking hitting the ropes for some dive or some crazy shit. And uh, then he gives Hobbs a death drop off the stage through two tables. And I had people asking about Hobbs because the doctors were right there and they didn't let him up and everything. Apparently he's totally fine, so that's good. But it was fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And Sting pinned him and they won the match. This was completely fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ric Flair's in the ring looking like Ric Flair's great-grandfather. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Adam Cole, difficulty getting another ring. I think Adam Cole, uh, he's two bad legs right now, right? No one. Well, okay. Well, with one leg, he's still significantly more mobile than Ric Flair with two. But, uh, I mean, Sting looks like Sting's grandpa. I mean, he's got one bad leg, but he's got a cast the size of, like, it's like they made it out of an elephant's leg. Right. Fucking goes all the way up to here. It's this big around. I don't know how he moves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, JR notes there's a lot of audibles being called. <laughs> Which I what? Thought was, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Darby does his coffin drop from the heavens, and Sting and Hobbs do that reverse DDT that kind of sort of went through the tables. Looked absolutely no fun. And Hobbs gets pinned, and Hobbs got that one giant squash over Jericho, and he's just Hobbs now. He's just Hobbs. Not that, uh, you know, Sting is still undefeated, which is part of the story here. I wouldn't say he's just Hobbs. I mean, somebody was going to do a job here, and I don't think this hurt Hobbs at all. He got a death drop off the fucking stage through two tables in an awesome match where he killed everyone. <laughs> I think he'll be all right. That was violent. So, so Shivani goes to interview Sting and company in the ring. March 3rd, Revolution, Greensboro, for your last match. Who will your opponent be? And they are inter interrupted by the young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson, looking very chill and very dapper. And they also have mustaches. And everyone just looks at each other. For a long, long time. Well, they get that whole five-minute overrun in. So this is why they had the overrun. YouTube TV could die. Yes, yes. So there you go. That was a very fun show, highlighted by that awesome, awesome opener. All right, so I told the story earlier today, but you know, a lot of people were, Ah, is it the Young Bucks? Sting's last match. It should have been my... So the story is, Sting was the one who got to choose who his final match would be. So if you want to be mad at somebody, you can be mad at Sting. Mm -hmm. He's the one that chose the Young Bucks. So apparently it was uh, Forbidden Door. Let's see what year it was. Forbidden Door 2022. There was a match, which was uh, Dudes with Attitudes, Darby, Sting, and Shingo. Yes. 
versus El Fantasmo, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson. So Sting and Darby were in the ring with the Young Bucks. And apparently afterwards, Sting was like, that's the most fun I may have ever had. <laughs> I don't know if it was ever had or had in years or whatever. Yeah. But but that's that's why he chose the Young Bucks as his final opponents. So uh, that was his pick, and that's that's the match. The Young Bucks versus Sting and Darby in Sting's retirement match. And apparently, like, you know, if you read the Young Bucks book, I mean, they grew up huge fans of, like, Hogan and Sting. Mm-hmm. So now they're going to be in his, his last match. So uh, pretty cool. A pretty cool deal, that is. And you know what? If I were going to have a last match with you, I wanted to be against the Young Bucks. Because I'm pretty sure they could get a good match out of me and you. If anyone could. Even you. If anyone could. If. If anyone could. Yes. It'd be the, the ones you'd call. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.